what are we doing if we're going fishing next weekend cody bait wise all right so obviously y'all got a week to get baits together you know with me being berkeley you know i don't fish with berkeley a whole lot you know the, the berkeley tournament was the only time i really used it so you got to find something that you can use that you're kind of used to unfortunately berkeley does not make a frog, a popping frog. But Siebel does, which is owned by Berkeley. You want to take me a crown? Yeah, that's your croissant. <laughs> what, your croissant? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. Look, at my, look at my fat butt talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. But uh, this is a Siebel pop, popping frog. It's called a pivot frog. Pivot frog, yeah. Um, you can pick these up online. I you can't find them anywhere in the store, so if you want to get a frog, so you can work a frog in some grass maybe, I'd order them today. That way you can have them by the end. Um, but first thing in the morning, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be throwing top water in the grass areas that he's talking about. I'm not going to hit the docks first thing in the morning. Daylight, it's all top water. Uh, I'm going to throw these little sable frogs. I'm going to throw their little walking uh, spook bait they got. Um, uh, whopper plopper, I, which I didn't bring those because y'all yeah, yeah, pretty much don't What they call it? Chopo? Chopo, yeah. yeah. Chopo, yeah. Um, and, and they got a little pop bar, uh, like a little yellow magic kind of. Uh, that's what I'm going to be throwing first thing in the morning on those. But like I said, sable, uh, pivot frog. All right. Um, and with this Berkeley tournament, guys, the baits are one thing, and Berkeley makes a lot of good plastics, and I believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, you can use hardware of anybody's. Yep. So like for us, if we want to throw a shaky head on a dock in the middle of the afternoon, we can use a six cent shaky head. We just can't use a six cents worm. We got to put a Berkeley straight tail worm on there, yeah. which they have, the Berkeley <laughs> flat worm is like a really good drop shot worm. It's the hottest one in the world, really. Right, and I've got some of that stuff in here. All right, so this right here, this oh, time of year, right this is Berkeley. You cannot find these anywhere in the stores. You'll have to order these online too. He's got one for sale. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. Not anymore. It's in my hand. Those will be in my boat. Yeah, those will probably be in his boat. But with them chasing shad, that this, is awesome, dude. This is going to be a good thing. I didn't get these in last year in time. It was after the dang tournament. But um, oh, that looks like a money winner. You'll catch all the unders you want to on that dude right yeah. there. So. I'd go find one of these if I was y'all. They may not be out there no more. And uh, you may talk to Vic. I mean, I own these, but you know, I'll I'll give him a percentage if y'all buy them from him. No, so I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna make some sales in the Oh, one other thing for the top water bite in the morning. Well, I can't find the dang. Is these little ribbit frogs? Yeah. Uh, they Berkeley makes a hook for those. It's in here somewhere. This is called. Here they are, right here. The beaten paddle frog. Boy, that is a great name. Oh my god. <laughs> be beaten paddle frogs. What they call it? Uh, yes, sir. It's a Berkeley bait. It's power bait frog. The beaten paddle frog. And you can get those right downstairs. Yeah. So we're the, the two videos we're putting out next week. On Monday, you guys are gonna see a video where I walk through every scenario that I've been fishing on lake on guide trips. And I'll show you in detail how we're fishing the area, what the area is, baits we're using, all that good stuff. Um, and then on Wednesday, I'm actually going to film, I haven't done yet, I'm going to film a shopping spree video here in Lake Fork Marina where I go through Lake Fork Marina and go, if I'm fishing Berkeley, these are the baits we're going to buy. So we got more content like this to really help everybody get ready for Berkeley over this whole week coming up. Yeah. So. And these are the hooks. They're just a, a split hook with a, um, I can't think what them, uh, twist. Twist locks. They don't, they're not weighted because it's mm -hmm. a topwater deal, it, yep. but this is a Berkeley Fusion frog hook. Yep. That's what it's called. It's Berkeley Fusion frog hook. But you can use a ribbon hook. You can, you can use whatever hook you want yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. By the rules. You can use hardware. Like you can use. Any terminal tackle. You can use a spinner bait or a chatter bait from somebody else, but you got to put a Berkeley skirt on it. And a Berkeley yeah, plastic. Take the original off. Yeah. Berkeley skirts. I, I'm about to show you that. Right. They usually sell them in the tent here yeah. for the event. So when you register for Berkeley, they'll have, they'll have stuff there that you can buy and they'll have skirt shoes. Because I think a lot of people do that with jigs and spinner baits, swim jig, whatever. But a lot of times they are out of the skirts. So they have this, it's called a skirted grass pig, and all it is is a swim bait with a skirt on it. All right. And I guess you're allowed to cut those off, like on a double dose, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm hmm. 
Interesting. That looks like I'd tear that apart in one second. <laughs> that's why you got to get super glue. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh, th this, this swim bait, though, it's really stiff, so I don't like using it on the um, um, chatter bait. So, cut it off. You take your chatter bait. Here. We're getting fancy. I ain't trying. We're going all in. My man's got a Z Man chatter bait. Get away, I was like. <laughs> but I would not recommend doing this with a jackhammer because that's what, uh, quite expensive. <laughs> yeah. So you just rip that skirt off. Which you, you say the skirt, you can put it back on. It ain't going to hurt it none. But, and then you just thread that in there. Wrong way, hat. Oh, it is the wrong way. Thanks, sir. You nervous? No, no, I ain't nervous. I'm blind. <laughs> you know what I don't understand? We've been fishing a lipless crankbait a lot here lately. Hey, fish will come up and hit that lipless crankbait, not get hooked up. Dude, I can't tie the knot on that thing without getting hooked. But a fish will come up there and hit it and pull your rod down and not get hooked. <laughs> what in the hell? They special. Yeah. They, they, they will know. sometimes, man. And you know, I would say they're just nose bumping or something. Y'all don't foul hook them. And, There's six dang hooks there. And I've also <laughs> seen video of fish going and putting the whole bait in their mouth and spitting it right back out. And still don't get hooked. Yeah, mm -hmm. how is that possible? I don't know. Like I said, I can't tie the knot on the dude without getting two or three hook points in my hand. <laughs> but anyway, so you just slide that on there. So you just took oh, that skirted grass pig, you cut the top part off, mm -hmm. which has like a little section where you can cut it real nice and easy. Yep. And you just ran that up there. That's pretty cool. Yep. And then you can just put your regular old, you know, Berkeley, they do have their own little paddle tail swim baits. You know, that's a bigger version of it. they call it a rib shad. Rib shad, they do. And yep. that way... And this is what I know. So when you had that grass pig on there, I was like, dude, that, that swim bait's hanging too far below that skirt when you turn it upside down. It was like there was mm -hmm. that much swim bait. I don't like that. So I like to do, especially this time of year, some of the bait fish you're around are going to be small. So you want your bait to be more compact, or I do anyway. So now I can take and line this up and go, all right, I'm going to trim that right there, and then my whole bait's going to be that long. Yeah, or you can just get a small one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you can do that on a chatterbait. But if you can't find a small... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to make it work. I really was thinking that, though, on that skirted grass pig. I was like, that's too much swim bait, not enough skirt. Thank you, Roy. It just was too much, the swim bait was too long. Oh, yeah. Flow right. Yeah. No, I didn't bring that one for the chatterbait. But, all right. So with these little paddle tails, right now, it, it I'm not going to bring up, but uh, Vic has been using this Sunderspin last night. And so with this bigger... Paddle tail, you want to use a little three aught, a uh, flashy swimmer, owner hook, or six cents, whatever. Uh, just in this case, I just had an owner hook, so I grabbed these. Well, um, I, mean, I mean, they're that. I mean, I use the flashy swimmer from owner. They're just, I don't know if they're the only ones. They're dang sure really good. Yeah. I'm not going to use any uh, swim base. I don't know when they Forbes six inches long. Right, like right now, the the bait fish are so small. All the bait fish it, we're seeing are, are really small. just depends on the bait fish you're seeing. There are yeah. some areas I have. And I have some main lake pockets right now that have had bigger shad from the main lake just kind of pop up into those main lake pockets temporarily until they migrate. And when I get in those areas, then I pick bigger baits up. And so you could there, theoretically, but in those areas, it's more, it's not grass related, it's more timber and open water. I'm tempted to throw more square bills than I do anything else. So if I notice bigger bait, I may pick up a bigger square bill and tie it on or, or a jerk bait, it's a little bit longer profile. Or even if it's really big shad, I'm picking up a big glide bait. Well, I've, I've heard the chartreuse blue pretty good right now. What about the, uh, like the red chartreuse square bell? Is that going to work Man, this year? Man, for me, for me, I don't know. I mean, it's Lake Fork. They get a lot of pressure. They can bite some weird stuff sometimes out here, no doubt about it, right? But for the most part, for me, no matter what lake I go to this time of year, I'm sticking to shad patterns. I like the sexy shad type colors. Give me a white bait with a little bit of chartreuse and blue in it. You know, citrus shad. Just give me shad patterns this time of year. Mm -hmm. on. Now, Everything. As far as I know, there's no such a uh, lure that's made by Berkeley. Well, they've got. I'm talking about. Like, they've got the hollow belly, and they've got they've mm -hmm. got square bills. They've got a little bit of everything, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look for it, they got everything. Yeah, they got it. They've expanded the their few line days. I have it all down here. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. If they would take my advice, they'd have a lot better baits. I've emailed them like twice a year. And I, <laughs> Berkeley, yeah. I, I believe, I believe right downstairs is the biggest selection of Berkeley anywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. in a retail yeah. store in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know this is the first time I fished Berkeley when I heard about it, and they said you can only use Berkeley. Well, I use a crawfish and a worm, and 
Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we got a chigger crawl and a power worm. Uh, they've got right? so much like, more That's the two now. best things they've made for years. <laughs> but and also, it's it's pure fishing, right? It's not that's the thing that's a little bit confusing. It's pure fishing, which is not just Berkeley. And I don't even know what all the brands are. I think it's Sabil. Is it Booyah? Uh, not Booyah. Bo Bo no. Sabil, Johnson. Johnson. Sabil, Johnson. Uh, I know you can go to the. Heard of. You can go to the pure fishing. You can go to the yeah. But you can go to the Pure Fishing, fishing website. Old school Johnson spoon here lately. Like, I was about to say you can buy the little grass spoon, like like you know, with the hook instead of the treble yep. hook. Yeah. Uh, and it's about, I mean, it's perfect size yeah. for these shad right now. So. Fish on yeah, that old Johnson swimming spoon ain't no joke. No, it's not. Yeah. But um, but you know, like he said, shad pattern. So I, I'm always throwing something shad pattern this time of year too. So get your little one aught flashy swimmer for this size uh, because this is pretty close to the size of the shad that are swimming right now that they're that they're chasing mostly mostly so there is some except i don't mean to override no you, no there you are don't. times when you're gonna when you see a bigger shad pop out you need to upsize your baits because yep. they're keying in you know when you're when you're selecting baits um size profile might be the most important thing you can get right right i mean to me in my opinion it might be i mean color is the least important you know size profile and then depth and speed of presentation and then color like the size is so important to get right if fish are eating shad that long and you're throwing them something like this they're not going to pass up this for this at the same time if they're focused on this and there ain't none of this around they're keyed into that they're not going to even look at that so the size profile is real important that might have been where i messed up i just ordered a 18 dollar chopper it's like the four and three quarter yeah. No. Well, that's okay. I mean, it's, I mean, yeah. the Chapo is top water bait. It's more reactive. I mean, I probably would throw the smaller Chapos in this event mm -hmm. unless I was seeing the bigger bait. I really yeah. would. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to have the thing about that Chapo is you could have a giant roll up on that on any stretch of bank out mm -hmm. here right now. You don't know because they're moving. They're all over the place so much. Um, it's you know if you want to go try to target a big one and over, throwing a Chapo for the first hour or two of the day ain't a bad idea. And it's a good idea. Yeah. That, that's what I had you're gambling mind. though it's like everything with big bait fishing like when you're trying to target a 24 inch fish you are rolling the dice i mean nobody catches overs out here every day nobody catches them every week right there's every guy on the lake goes multiple weeks without catching overs yeah and a bit like he's talking about the size to make a world of difference i'll just give you an example last night wasn't it last night big yeah last night i was throwing a 1.5 square bill he was throwing a little tiny thing, and he was catching more fish than I was. Same colors, just different size profile. And that, that is proof in the pudding. You know? I, I, I won a, uh, a working man's tournament. This has been years and years and years ago. But I won a summertime working man's tournament where it was daylight for most of the tournament because you know how that is, and sometimes it's daylight till 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, but you could see these fish. I was around good fish. I mean, you could see them chasing bait on the surface, and they were getting after it, blowing up on them little mini pops of schooling activity. And, man, I was throwing everything I could think to them, and I couldn't catch nothing. Everybody's been around schooling fish they can't catch, right? Well, some of these schools of shad go by my boat, and they are just the smallest. I mean, they're big groups of them, but they're just the smallest little shad, and I just couldn't find anything small enough. Like, you know, I couldn't find anything that was near that small. Well, I finally, as I'm digging through my storage in my boat, trying to find something smaller so I can't think of nothing, whatever, there's a crappie box sitting there. <laughs> and I had some of those old uh, underspin rooster head Rooster things. tails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just pulled out a little shed-colored <laughs> rooster tail with a little roadrunner. Roadrunner, that's what it was, with a little blade on the back. Hey, I picked that thing up, and I couldn't even throw it on bait cast here. It's the tiny side to tie it on a spinning rod. Only tournament I've ever won on a spinning rod. And I, I wanted to... Easy. <laughs> when I tournament fish, I did. You have to. But uh, I don't have one in there right now. I don't have a single spinner rod in my boat right now. Um, but I won that tournament on a little rooster tail, crappie, That's awesome. swimming crappie bait because they were eating bait that small. I mean, it's, it's a huge deal to get the size of your, your bait presentation right. It's a mm -hmm. really big deal. Yep. That's the craziest thing. I mean, I've caught oh, at least six, seven pound bass on H&H. &H. And I have caught a fish on a, on a bait, a fish wasn't as big as the bait. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're really dumb. Like they do dumb things for dumb reasons all the time. Yeah. I've also said this a lot. Have you ever eaten a metal hot dog or a plastic hamburger? 
<laughs> like t- took a bite out of it and tried to swallow it. We, you know, nobody I know has ever done that. Well, they do it every day or we wouldn't be here. Like that, they're dumb. So they're going to do things that we don't understand all the time. Look at um, this little dude. What is this? This is a Berkeley little square bill. What? This, dude, I could have used this and that turned out it looked a lot cooler than Bonan Bang Rooster Tail. Look at that little dude. A 38 fat dog floating shell of diver. How about that? Where, dude, how old are these baits? This packaging looks like it's from 1985. Yeah. Okay, we need to pass that around. That's pretty much hey, how Berkeley works. That's from downstairs. Works. I know that. That's pretty much how Berkeley works. You yeah. get it and you just use it year after year after year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's then, a really cool little deal right there. Then I had a bunch more of them. I, I didn't want them. I just put them in a yellow magic case because I didn't want them getting all hung up in here. Well, I don't know. I think but. you may have just disqualified those baits from the tournament because they went into a yellow magic case. Oh, man. So it's not a Berkeley case. You can't That's use right. it anymore. Good thing I ain't using them. You can't get any reason to Berkeley, huh? <laughs> Mickey can't even borrow them. <laughs> he said he's got some already. Those are really cool, man. Yeah. I've never seen the square bill that little. And, and I didn't like, even bring the 1.5. They make it's that. Max one, too. They make that for crappie, I'm sure, but here yeah, we are using it for bass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. It's a six-inch yep. waterproof bag. Yeah. Oh, you can't use any of those baits now. That's a six-inch bag. <laughs> so, all right. So this goes shad pattern, flukes, shad color. All right, weightless Carolina rig. Called it a power jerk shad. Power jerk shad. Yep. So, like you said, we're gonna be throwing shad colors. So he was talking about fishing these docks. Um, with a wacky worm. There's a like a Cinco style. This is called the Berkeley General Power yep. Bait. This has been around a long time. I know it's a good bait. It's good bait. And that's that's a good color for this time of year. So this time of year we always tend to stay with the grays and whites and you know. So pearl black holograms, what they call that color, but it's just a Cinco style bait. It's called the Berkeley General. Yeah, it's yep. like a Cinco. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, man, that, yeah. I mean, when, when it's dirty, yeah, you're supposed to go, uh, June bug, purple, black, blue, blue fleck, but you'll still get bites on that. Here, here's my opinion on, on dirty water and colors about shad patterns. Um, White shows up in dirty water. It's just solid. Solid colors are going to show up better in dirty water. White shows up good in dirty water. Think about this. When you're fishing really dirty water and you pull and you catch a bass, what color is he? He's pale. He's dang near white. Well, what color do you think that shad's turning in that dirty water? I mean, he's, he gets white. Mm -hmm. So even if the water's stained, especially what's been going on here with turnover, it is in areas it's going to be dirty. Uh, don't shy away from white. Like if you feel like, well, this is too natural of a shad color, just get white, like bright white. Uh, in the dirtiest water we experience all year out here, which is usually in late winter, pre-spawn, I throw a white chatter bait, like it ain't no tomorrow, and me and every other guy do, and we've all caught giants on it. Uh, white shows up good in dirty water, and it looks just like a shad, because they get real, fish in dirty water get pale. And a pale shad is dang near bright white like that man's shirt. Mm -hmm. So as far as shaky head, so, you know, six cents came out with the new swing shaker, seven sixteenths. That's a good little, little great, uh, great hook. Head. Yes, it is. These little baits right here, the Berkleys, will be perfect on it. This is called a. Yeah, if you don't mind looking. We got a fatty bottom hopper. Which is that? It's got a big old tail on That's it. That's a trick worm. That's a short trick worm. It's a short fat trick worm. Is yep. What it is. It's a. And then we've got. The shaky snake. Shaky snake, yeah. Which it's is a ribbed. half of a cinco and a half of a rib worm. Yep. And that thing has a lot of action. That's like the uh, Grande Bass Snakeo, which was a, always a great shaky head bait for me back yep. in the day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Texas rig those or just whacking. I'd probably throw them on a shaky head more than I would Texas rig. Mm -hmm. You know, if I wanted to fish them in grass, I'd Texas rig them and peg like a little eighth ounce bullet weight. You could Texas rig them in grass that way. Like if you get in that grass and they're just not really chasing Chad that day. Hey, that ain't a bad idea to take one of those and put it on a light Texas rig. But for all this dock fishing and stuff we're talking about, shaky head's going to be a better presentation, I think. Yeah. Take that shaky snake if you were pegging and fishing the grass, that tail would flutter. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, any any straight tail worm can work on a Texas rig. It's just they work better on a stand-up head unless you have to fish something different because the vegetation or whatever you're fishing is just too dense. 
Right. All right, and then last, can never go wrong with eight and a half inch, seven inch, ten inch, twelve inch Berkeley Blue Fleck Power Worm. Berkeley Blue Fleck Power. In fact, this Bass Chefs has been running this Berkeley tournament out here for I don't know how many years, and I'd be willing to bet that a Blue Fleck Power Worm has won more of them than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do that this time of year. When the water starts cooling off, they get they come out of the deep. And they get real shallow. It's the only place they can get away from bass is out of the water. <laughs> and so they'll get up in those those flooded mats like Pondweed, which now the lake's just about two foot low, getting close to two foot low mm -hmm. now. There's not those flooded pond Pondweed shoreline mats ain't just everywhere you go anymore like they were earlier in the year. Uh, but those crawfish love to get up in that stuff to get away from bass. And no, they will. They'll get at times all the way on the bank. Usually, if you got crawfish and you're seeing on the bank, that means there's bass feeding on them crawfish in that area. They don't want to be out there in that 90 degree sunshine. Crawfish don't like heat. They want to be in the water. Uh, they're up there because they're getting chased after. So uh, we are throwing a jig right now. I want to be throwing the finesse jig, the smaller profile finesse jigs. Honestly, we're getting better bites on a little 3 8 ounce hybrid jig with a fuller skirt. And we're still taking the regular stroker crawl and trimming it down, making it real short and compact. Um, but they're just not biting the finesse jig with the baby stroker crawl as good as they are like a 3 8 ounce jig. And just a green and brown skirt on the jig. Crawfish this time of year, and most of the year out here are crayfish are colored green and brown. Like a green pumpkin, pumpkin seed, green pumpkin orange. That type of color is what most of the crayfish out here look like most of the year. Now, they get black, 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 blacker in the winter, and then they get some red in them come pre-spawn, early spring. When they start spawning, they get red in them. But most of the year, they're green pumpkin and pumpkin seed color. Um, and one thing is we go small profile because the young of the year crawfish, the crawfish that were born this year, spring and summer, they bury it up in mud holes out deep all summer. They come out and go to the bank in the fall. Well, they're little bitty. They don't have hardened shells and their claws aren't all the way developed. So if you can imagine being a bass and now you got me a little protein packed snack that has no hard shell and no claws. That's just easy pickings for a bass. And they do at times key in on those in the fall. And that little green and brown jig has been, it does it. I mean, that green and brown jig has caught fish for me every year in the fall. I mean, every single year out here, and it's something that not a lot, and we're talking about fishing it shallow now, like in a foot of water. Yeah. Like just take a little small profile jig and pitch it around any cover you can in a foot of water, two foot of water, whatever, uh, and we catch fish on that every year. And I don't think a lot of people are fishing a jig like that in October, November, but it works. It really works. You know, I've seen this video about crawfish. Uh, this guy, he kept one, he got one, put it in a fish tank. Uh, just fish tank with rock, nothing else in it. The fish started turning green, brown, bluish color, which is what would be in the winter time. All right, so to come in spring where the grass is starting to grow back up in summer, he introduced grass into this tank and the, the crawfish started turning into the red and orange's color more because he's, they did a study that the grass, that crawfish is getting the proteins off that grass and that's what's making him change the colors. So, yeah. So. Crawfish love grass. That's yeah. their favorite thing to be around. That's that's another article I read on crawfish years ago. Was a guy that was a professional Bassmaster Elite Series guy. It is TJ. TJ, yeah, yeah. He uh, he worked at a crawfish farm in Louisiana. And he said when they had crawfish in tanks or whatever, if they had wood, rock, grass, they always went to the grass. Them crawfish love grass more than anything else. So people think of crawfish being around wood and rock. So I'm telling, no, they gonna be in that grass. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what most people think. Oh, rocks. Right. Crawfish. No, it's grass. Yep. They love grass most. In fact, those if you if you pay real close attention in the springtime, uh, those pondweed mats and gator grass mats, and when they start getting blooming up and getting thick, get close to one of those mats and turn everything off and listen. Mm -hmm. You will hear little clicks, little clicks. Those are crawfish moving around in that grass, clicking their claws or whatever they do to click. I don't know what they use to make that noise, but they click. The tails. It's real faint. I mean, real faint sound, That's but it's out, click, man. click. Hmm? That's out for me. Can't hear? Okay. <laughs> well, I I'm telling you, I, it's out for you too. I feel like this year I've been losing my hearing. Like, man, like especially here lately. Like, I I don't think I'll be able to hear nothing here another year. It's it's fading on me. One thing, also keep a keep an eye on your live well after you catch a fish in the area. 
Because a lot of times the fish will regurgitate what it is, and you can see what they're eating and kind of yep. pick your bait from that. Yep. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Right. Any questions? It's been a long one tonight. We did a good one. I think it was good. Yeah. I think that was a good discussion, covered a lot of good stuff. So, hey, thank you guys so much for coming, Cody. Hey. Thank you for joining us as thank always. You, want to send a big shout out to Lake Fork Marina. Y'all go down there, buy you some Berkeley baits for next week, uh, buy some Six Cents baits if you want to support. The Six Cents Texas brand, whatever you do, go buy something from Lake Fork Marina because they do an awesome job letting us take over every two weeks. And we'll be right back here in two weeks and we'll see y'all then. Thank y'all.